We are in the Ingenious ENS 620 EXT Wave 2 wireless access point, and I'm going to show you a quick setup so you can get this thing up and running in no time. So I've gone ahead and plugged in the Ingenious into my network switch, and I needed to connect to it, and unfortunately I'm on a different subnet than it is. It's on 192.168.1 subnet, as you see up here, yet if I go to a command prompt and I type in IP config, it says 192.168.15. So in order to communicate with it, I have to be on the same subnet as the Ingenious is. So if I right click in the taskbar and go to Open Network and Sharing Center and go to Change Adapter Settings, then I can go to my Network Properties and I can go to Internet Protocol 4 and then we click on the Advanced and then we can click on add. So from here I can put in 192.168.1. anything other than one. So I can put in 20 if I want. And then just use the default subnet mask and then click add. So I've gone ahead and done this already. You can see I have a 1.50 in here. So we can go ahead and cancel, cancel, and we can go ahead and get back into our wireless access point. So once I'm on the same subnet, I just put in a 192.168.1.1 at the top and I use the default username and password that they give you in your quick start guide. And now I can go to networks and I want to get it on the same subnet that my uh, my different computers are on. So I can put in 192.168.15 and I can put in anything that we're not currently using such as 100. And then I have to change my gateway to 15.1. Now yours might be completely different. If you're on a Comcast network you might be on a 10.1.10.1 so you may want to make it uh, .2 or .3 something like that something that's not in use or you can go on the high end to 250, 253, 254, 255 something like that you can always ping the address to see if that uh, if that device is there so let's go ahead and ping 192.168.15.100 and if we don't get a response that's a good indication that the device there is no device with that IP address so I'm also going to type in ARP minus A and I also need to look to see if I see 15.100 so sometimes the firewalls block pinging but they can't block the ARP request alright so now I know that this particular IP address is good to go so I'm gonna go ahead and click save now I'm going to lose communication with it as soon as that happens so I need to go into a new tab and put in 192.168.15.100 and I should be able to communicate as soon as I do one more thing and that is go over to my original and go to changes and click apply alright so now it is applying and we should be able to switch over to this new IP address here shortly as soon as it's done looks like it's all set so let's go ahead and put in our default username and password and now we're in on the 15.100. Now let's set up basic networking in wireless. All right, so we have two different options here. We've got the 2.4 gigahertz for the older devices and the 5 gigahertz for the new devices. So if you think you only have newer devices, then you don't have to use the 2.4. You can just uncheck the box and then now you're no longer using the older 2.4 but if you have both devices go ahead and put them both on the only disadvantage to having both on is that it's not going to work as fast or as far as if you just choose one or the other but if you want both then great go ahead and do it now the next thing we got to do is to go ahead and choose the name of our wireless access point SSID so let's go ahead and scroll down until we get to our SSID so we need to have at least one of them enabled, and which this is, and this is the SSID name. So it's kind of a long name, nobody really likes that. So you can just put in uh, my access point or something more creative than that. And then you can get that spelled right there. Then you can go ahead and set up the security. So by default it says none, we don't want that. We gotta add some security. So let's go ahead and click on edit and we're going to add some security by adding a password so our security mode is going to be WPA2 
PSK for pre-shared key. That's going to be the best one. Let's go ahead and choose under encryption. If you have TKIP and AES, it's, it's backwards compatible with really old devices. So I don't recommend that because it lowers the security. So let's just choose AES for advanced encryption service. Let's put in our passphrase. Never guess. Actually put in something better than that. And uh, leave the rest of the defaults. And let's go ahead and choose save. And now we have my access point set up. So if we were to browse to a, an available wireless access point, we would see my access point there, put in the never guessed password, and now you are connected to your ingenious ENS620 EXT. Now I've got a lot more videos to show for advanced mode options and operations, all the different things you can do. So if you want to do more creative things or if you're having trouble, you want to do some troubleshooting, then take a look at the rest of the videos in this course and you'll learn all. And of course, to apply the changes, don't forget to click the changes button and then click apply. And that'll do it. So check out the other videos and thanks for watching.